What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Crazy Crab Chess channel. Today, we're going to be starting a new series on an opening known as the Albin Counter Gambit. This is an opening you use as black. I love these kind of openings where you get your opening on the board, you get your preparation on the board, and you're not going to play the lines that white is prepared for. So this is a reply to the Queen's Gambit. Opening moves, D4, you're going to reply with D5. And now white, of course, oftentimes plays C4. Expecting you to play the Queen's Gambit declined. Expecting maybe the Slav, they're totally prepared for that. Occasionally, maybe Knight C6. And uh, even sometimes C5 is seen. But today, we're not going to play those moves. In fact, the only move I play in this position, just because I want to have complete preparation and it is co the complete advantage as far as my previous knowledge, E5. And there's lots of good attacking lines with this move. So this is going to be the position from which every line will be played throughout this entire video series. This is part one of a multi-part series on this counter gambit known as the Albin counter gambit. Now from this position, there are actually several moves that we got to be prepared for. Now the most common is simply D takes E5. And in this position, we're simply going to push D4. But throughout this series, I'm also going to show you what to do after knight c3. You get incredible attacking opportunities after knight c3. It's kind of my favorite move to see from white. Occasionally, the more boring e3 is played, and that oftentimes will transpose into a certain French defense line. And we'll briefly touch on, in a later video, the more rare knight f3 move and what to do in that position. But today, like I said, we're going to focus... Actually, the first few videos will probably focus here on this move because this is the most common and there's so many lines we have to be aware of. Like I said, the first move is simply D4. Now, from this position, the main line move is for the knights to come out first. So, white will bring out his or her knight and we're going to bring out our knight. And this is the main line that we're going to be focused on throughout the first few videos because it's a very common position. Today we're going to be strictly looking at the reply E3. But before we get into E3 with the knights out, because you can have this position, E3, with the knights already out. Also, though, slightly different, but it has to be noted that they are different is when e3 is played immediately before the knights come out and this is actually better for black notice right here black with the slight edge it's better because with this knight still on g1 we're going to have some really cool opportunities perhaps now i'll show you the famous lasker trap which is part of this Albin Counter Gambit, which if you play the Albin Counter Gambit, I'm sure you already know about the trap, but we obviously have to cover that um, in this video. So the first move after E3, whether the Knights are out or not, is actually going to be Bishop B4 check. And from here, two main replies that we're going to see is Bishop D2 blocking like this or Knight D2 blocking like this. And we got to be prepared for both. The most common is going to be bishop d2. So we'll just start with this one. This is going to be the most common move. And I suggest immediately taking the, e pawn, the, the pawn here on e3. Why do I do this immediately? Because I want white to think that I blundered this bishop. Especially online. Like, boom, I'll take immediately. But even over the board, I'll take this pretty quick. And hopefully white says, wait a minute, this this bishop is completely unprotected. That's what I want him to think. Which makes it more likely that they will snag this bishop. As opposed to when the knights are out, the bishop would have been protected. And we're still hoping that he grabs it. And we'll look at that in a little bit. But your opponent is less likely to grab it if the knights are out. But in this position, I feel like there's a better than a 50% chance that your opponent will snag the bishop. Bishop takes b4. Look at that bar jump. 
the next move is pretty obvious. E takes F2 because you're throwing in a check. The king has to respond. If the king takes, I hope you see it, the queen hangs. So if the king takes on F2, you take the queen, you're winning the game. If white sees that, which typically white will see that, and simply move the king forward to E2. And now this is the critical moment. What to do when you take on G1. Here's the problem if you make a queen. The problem if you make a queen is it gives white time to trade off queens here. That would be a check. King takes and then rook takes your queen and white has completely equalized. And you have lost the advantage. So what to do? We need to throw in a check when we capture. And only one piece does that. The knight. Knight check on g1 and now white is completely lost after he captures the knight and you throw in bishop g4 check we have now won the queen and most likely white will go ahead and resign right here and that's the famous lasker trap we do have to know what to do in the rare scenario that after you turn into a knight black actually just move uh, excuse me white actually just moves the king and white's like uh oh if i take here he's got this and it, this could happen especially on longer time controls where white has time to think they will see that and simply move the king so let's say king moves back to e1 we're still completely winning and in this position we can go ahead and just play queen h4 check and there's very little that they can do and they're probably going to play g3 queen goes to e4 this is a very common little maneuver in this opening where the queen comes out and snaps over here uh comes out here h4 with a check we're going to see that tons in this uh alban counter gambit sometimes the queen drops back down to here but usually over here to e4 just like this throws in the check and well no matter what you know we're either going to take the rook or maybe even take the queen if the queen blocks here Obviously, we take the queen with the knight. So, again, bishop here, we take the rook. Uh, if king tries to run over here, we take the rook. If queen tries to block, we take the queen. So, you know, the only move, maybe you, you could still take the rook here, and you're completely winning. Just to keep it simple, you can just take the rook. You could also, in this position play like bishop g4 attacking his queen just bringing out more pieces and you're still going to completely win the game queen might try a4 uh, throwing in a check we could just bring out the knight and completely winning here we're fixing to castle um in a moment and just checkmate the white king rook will probably go ahead and grab the the knight over here but like i said we just castle and white is completely lost. Uh, King c1, and we're fixing to come up here and mate. We can't right away because the queen is is uh, guarding this square. So I'm grab the knight. I mean, grab the bishop. Excuse me, grab the bishop here. And if queen takes back, then we we'll just checkmate. So uh, several ways to win. That's one possible line um, there. So so just on the off chance that the king moves after you've turned uh, your pawn into a knight, after you're promoted to a knight, that's what to do. So. Um, but we also have to keep in mind, after this move, after the push, we're talking about the pawn coming to e3, throwing in this check. There's also the possibility that your opponent does block with the knight. Obviously, they're not going to go here because you can take, so they'll go here. Knight d2 to block. This does happen, and it's going to be a similar strategy. We're going to take, take, and boom, we have the queen check. After g3, we slide over here. This is, like I said, this maneuver is going to be pretty common in this opening. It's something we have to keep an eye on. We're attacking the rook. And the only two moves that kind of help for white right here is either knight to f3 or queen to f3. That's the options that white has right here. The rook can't even move. A lot of opponents will play their queen here because they don't want to hang e3. So they'll try queen f3. And in that case, remember the knights are not out yet. Knights have not come out in this variation. So we're just going to go ahead and grab the pawn on e5. Let's keep it simple. One line from here could go e3, excuse me, a3, attacking the bishop. Just go ahead and grab the knight. Bishop grabs back. 
And from here, we can go ahead and snag this pawn up here on B2. Rook is being attacked, so Rook going to run over probably to D1. These are some of the most common moves, and this is a variation that's been played um, many times. So, you know, not thousands of times or anything, but um, you play the Albin counter gambit enough, you'll probably get in this position if you follow these moves. And from here, you simply bring out your knight, and you can see black with a massive advantage. Um, queen throws in a check. Just go ahead and develop our knight. Uh, and doing just fine. So that's if the queen comes out after the knight blocks your check. You're trying to get into the Lasker trap, but he brings out the knight instead of the bishop. Well, we'll take, take. We throw in the check, g3, and then we slide over here. So we saw when the queen takes, we simply grab this pawn. If the knight comes out, knight f3, yes, this pawn here on e3 hangs, but then the queen can block, and if we trade queens, the bishop will take. I'd like to see if I can get this bishop to Finchetto itself here on g2. That way, after I take here, queen takes, we can take and maybe misplace the king. So a, a simple move here is just knight c6. Just develop your piece. Let's not, let's not rush to grabbing it. I mean, it's probably okay if you do. But you can see, actually, it's white is pretty much equalized. So it's actually not the best move. If the knight comes out, it's actually not best to take. It's best to bring out the knight. And I just know in my games, in this position, oftentimes the bishop will finchetto here on g2. And then I take on, on uh, e3, and it's much better for black. You can see black still maintains the edge because if the queen blocks on e2, now we can take, and the king has moved and now cannot castle so from here just simply bishop e6 and uh see black with a very clear advantage let's go back and look at one more line after all the way here after we've thrown in the check that's when the knight blocks swing our queen over to e4 and the knight comes out to f3 like i said knight c6 is the move and let's say right away White sees the attack on e3, decides instead of Finchetto, um, plays queen e2. So he wants to defend this pawn, but you could still take this pawn. Remember, you have the knight, you have the queen, so simply knight takes e5. Obviously, knight's uh, not going to take back. You got a little problem there. So what to do for white? Probably he's going to Finchetto the bishop. That's a very tempting move as it defends the knight. And allows knight to take and also has a discovered attack here on the queen. But we don't have to worry about that because we have knight d3 check in this position. And look at that king. Has to move. Has absolutely no choice unless they want to lose the queen. So say king f1. And from here now we can just kind of... Our queen is a little bit... Uh, it's not looking too good, but we still got to protect the knight. So queen g6 works fine. Everything is protected and white's king is misplaced and black is very much better in this position so just some moves here going into the lasker trap when white plays e3 immediately we throw out the check and we saw what to do if the bishop blocks we take here but we should also note what if we take here and what if he doesn't fall for this what if he doesn't take like this and he just takes back well, this is the same as I had the knight taken, but now the bishop took. So instead of the knight being here, the bishop is here. It's same old thing, though. He doesn't fall for the trap. We're going to play queen h4 check. g3, you already know. Queen e4. This is this is the maneuver that we're, we're going to go for. If he doesn't fall for it, uh, if he doesn't fall for taking the bishop, we're still going to do the same thing. And it's a little bit different, though, with the knight still on its home square instead of being on d2 so we have to look at the difference now now before after queen out to after queen to f3 before i said just grab the pawn on e5 but the problem is your bishop is hanging here because the knight's not here it's the bishop's here so before doing anything we're just going to typically trade this bishop off so bishop takes d2 check 
More than likely, knight takes, your queen is attacked, now you can take on e5. So just a little bit of a different, you know, just always got to trade off first because the bishop, your bishop will be being attacked by this other bishop. So we trade them off before we take on e5 in that scenario. And what if, let's say, you throw your check, play this, you come over here, and now knight f3. Now, before I said just simply bring out the other knight. Um, we're not in a big hurry to grab this pawn. Well, now we're definitely not in a hurry. Although, you can grab this pawn because there is a pin. So, actually, it's not the worst move to grab this pawn because white can't recapture. So, that's a, a pretty cool move. Could throw your opponent off a little bit if they didn't see it. But, I still suggest first go ahead and trade off the bishop. Let's just trade this bishop out of there. Knight takes. And now, we can take on e3 check as opposed to before we couldn't take here we ended up taking this pawn um in the other variation so queen takes e3 check a uh, queen maybe blocks on e2 just like this queen takes e2 bishop takes e2 knight c6 and actually white is playing pretty well but you still have a slight edge so we're just going to play your game from here and your your, your pawns are healthy you're going to be able to castle, and his pawns, uh, your opponent's pawns, a little more. You know, you got an isolated pawn here. Uh, this pawn, you know, can be protected, but at Black's position is clearly better here. Now, I wouldn't say outright winning, but definitely better. And those are just a, a few ideas on what to do after the initial pawn push and then the immediate e3. But let's now look at the more common knight f3 first. You respond knight c6. This is the more common position. And from here, there are tons of moves we're going to look at in this series. In this video series, we're going to look at e3, which we'll look at today. In the next video, we'll look at a3, as well as g3, which g3 is the most common at grandmaster level, meaning it's a good move. Also, knight bd2. And then bishop g4, and then the dreaded bishop g5, which you will see because it attacks the queen and it is protected by the bishop, by the knight. So those are all the moves that you will see in this position. We got to be ready. Is it going to be e3, a3, g3, knight bd2, bishop f4, or bishop g5? That's pretty much the six moves you'll see in this position that you have to be ready for. Today we'll look at e3, but this time it's with the knights out. So we just looked at e3 without the knights out. What's the difference? Well, nothing at first. You still throw your check in. You're still hoping he blocks with the bishop. And if he does, bishop d2, we still take the pawn. Hoping once again that the bishop will take. Because if the bishop takes, which less likely now, like I said earlier, because it's defended, but it does happen. And you can see the black edge jump up. Maybe not as much as before with the knights out, because when you throw this check in, and if the king takes, you'll win the queen, and you will be completely winning. But if he sees it and, and just goes here, unfortunately, we can't promote, because the knight has already developed. That's the unfortunate aspect of this opening. You can't promote. But black still has a clear edge here, and the correct move in this position is just to go ahead and trade off queens. Queen takes d1. King takes d1. And now we can grab the bishop over here. Knight takes b4. a3, very common here. The most common move you'll see. And we can just back up back to c6. King is probably going to try to chase down this pawn just because this pawn's a little too close to promotion. So they'd like to just get rid of it. And we're not really going to stop him. We're just going to simply play bishop f5. And um, this is already has a purpose because we're going to castle and hopefully maybe bring this rook up and try to target this knight right here. So after king takes, we castle and already we're looking to go rook d1 and try to attack this knight and um, we'll be able to if white plays some random move, maybe like uh, b5, or excuse me, b4 and now like I said, rook d1, we're completely winning if the knight moves um, the rook hangs so pretty cool possibility and if the knight or if the king just tries to attack the rook well we just win the piece and black with a massive advantage in this position
they may not fall for that. They may just play, bring their knight out. Just play your game from here, and uh, you should be fine. So, um, just play your your best game. And black is better. The king is uh, the white king is misplaced. Got an isolated pawn, and black is doing great. So let's back up a little, all the way to the point where the knights are out. We throw in the check, and the bishop blocks. We take here. Unfortunately, most likely, white won't take this bishop. They'll just recapture like before. Now, obviously, this is different. The knights are out. This check is not a thing. So what to do is kind of like before. Whenever this bishop is blocking, we are going to trade off these bishops. That's one of the first things just to think about. And now there's a few different variations depending on how white recaptures. If queen takes, queen recaptures here, um, what I like is bishop uh, g4. Allowing the trade off, because now the rook comes over, and we have a very you know solid rook here with a completely open file. And okay, it says we're about even. White has played okay, but some good things can happen. One possible line: say knight comes out to c3. Let's go knight g e7. Co common move is um, this knight g e7. We'll see that a lot in this series. And then he'll jump over here, try to kind of gang up on this pawn. So after knight to c3. Uh, knight g e7, uh, maybe bishop e2, white's going to try to castle. And from here, like I said, knight over to g6, ganging up on the pawn, white castles, go ahead and grab it with the c pawn, or the, the, uh, the knight on, the, on c6 will grab the pawn. And we're doing good here because if knight takes, we can take back and we're defending the bishop. Don't take here. That's actually a blunder because then this rook and this knight are uh, converging here on f7. So we don't want to, we have to take back like this so that if the bishop takes, we take. And, you know, black, ha black has a very, 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 very slight edge right here. So that's if the queen recaptures back on move eight. Let's back up a little bit. Just a, a possible line right there. So... White has done the right thing, has captured the pawn on e3, and we go ahead and grab the bishop. What we saw with the queen takes, I like this move, bishop g4, but what if knight takes? Knight b takes on d2. I got a special move for this position. We're going to be looking at this move for a little while. And in this position, when you've brought out the bishop, the bishop is blocked, you've traded off bishops, and the knight comes out to d2, my move is queen e7. It's a rarely play played move. Very rarely played, but it is one of the best moves, and you're now in complete preparation for whatever white's going to do next. For example, the most common move in this position, almost a 50% chance you'll see simply bishop e2 preparing to castle. We'll also look at if the bishop goes out to d3 in a moment, but let's start with bishop e2. Well, first of all, let's go ahead and grab this pawn. Knight takes on e5. Now, let's say he castles. And the special move here, knight g4. Attacking the e3 pawn, we revealed the queen, but the knight's also attacking, ready to fork the queen and the rook. So white might try queen b3, defending. We'll just go ahead and grab it. Queen takes e3, queen takes, knight takes, and the rook is being attacked. If the rook just slides here to e1, we have a fork. And we'll be able to fork the rooks. So where does he go? Probably over here to c1. Looks like a somewhat attractive square for the rook. At this point, we can just bring out our other knight. Knight f6. And after something like maybe knight b3, we can castle. And you can see black with a very nice edge right here. And that's with white playing decent. Let's look at some other lines after queen e7. Now, when do we play queen e7? Just a reminder, because it's so many lines. You know, this is when the knights have come out. e3, which we're looking at in today's video. Throw the check in, the bishop blocks. So you take here, hoping bishop takes. But in this position, pawn takes. Like, oh, well, we're going to trade off bishops. If the queen can't takes... We're going to play bishop g4, but if the knight takes like this, th 
this is when we play queen e7. Now we saw if bishop here, we just take here. If bishop goes out here, we still take here. Go ahead and grab the pawn. Pawn take, I mean knight takes, queen takes. And now we're attacking this pawn. So if he castles, we can grab the pawn and grab the bishop. And black completely winning right there. Okay, doing quite well. So, bishop there, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes. White sees this problem, doesn't castle, plays queen e2 to defend the pawn. But now, what hangs? b2. Queen takes b2. Rook might try b1 because he's attacking the queen, obviously with the rook here, with the knight here. You can take this pawn, and you're doing okay, but... I, I, I think if you take this pawn, he's going to castle, then the rooks will be connected, and it may start harassing the queen. I just think it's better just simply retreat queen e5. Not trying to give any initiative to white in any way. So let's say black, uh, excuse me, white castles right here, simply knight f6, and black is winning, or at least significantly better. Alternatively, after bishop d3, knight takes, knight takes, queen takes. I told you if queen here, we grab the pawn like this. But what if queen goes out here? This is a little different. Queen b2 not working so well in this case. Because there's too much threats after he castles. After black castles, look at this. Before the queen was over here. So we had time to take this pawn. Now it's going to be really hard to defend this. And the queen's a little bit out of out of position. If black defends perfectly, you can survive this, but this is not a good move right here. So if queen comes out to f3, we're simply going to play knight f6 just to try to neutralize this threat here on f7. So then after black after white castles, now we can play bishop g4, attacking the queen. We're the ones with the initiative here. And queen may get greedy right here. Most common move. They're going to take on b7. Look at black's the bar right there. Why? Because this rook can slip over here to d8. And you can see attacking two pieces. And there's no way white can defend both. So, you know, white might just start grabbing stuff. Um, that's perfectly fine. Uh, alternatively, he may try to you know, counterattack. That's fine. Because still, after it takes here, it's going to take here. And we always have the chance to come back and block if the queen tries to win our rook or something over here on, on h8. So doing just fine. Now we're attacking the queen. Sometimes you'll see a stupid blunder like rook will come over here trying to pile up. Oops. Just grab the queen. So let's back up again and see another possibility after, once again, the knight recaptures here on d2. We play queen e7. The special move right here. And let's say... A massive move here. Queen a4. White wants to be aggressive. This is a move. This is the, the second most common move after bishop e2. Uh, the bishop d3 is actually the third most common move. 24% of the time, white will play queen a4 in this position, and we're totally ready for it. What's the obvious move right here you would play? You don't, you don't even have to, you know, it's going to play itself, right? <laughs> of course, bishop d7. We're going to stare at that queen through the night. And from here, often it's the most common move. What's white going to do? They're going to try to mess with your B pawn, your B7 pawn. And look at that. Look at that bar. What to do here is important that you memorize this next line. Because we are going to try to trap this queen. And the move is knight B4. The knight is defended. We're threatening not only a fork of the rook, but we're also attacking the queen. White's going to do something. And this position, every single time I've been able to find, which is dozens of times through uh, on different websites and different databases, the queen grabs b7. They're just going to grab on b7. And you probably have already seen the move, but there is a move to trap the queen. And indeed, it is bishop c6, the queen is 100% trapped. There is literally no safe squares to go to. 
So Black has won the queen and should win the game. So there's a pretty cool line. That's that's one of my favorites right there. Alternatively, just to keep in mind, if the queen, instead of going here, jumps up here, it's a little bit different. Um, you can't jump up here. A3, it's, it's not as good. We're just going to have to go ahead and castle here, but you can see Black still with a very clear edge right here. So just castle if the queen goes to b3. But it seems like more often they want to come a little closer. Closer, closer, closer. And this is the fun one here. Because there we have this move. And this is obviously not working because you're attacking the queen. So we've looked at a few lines there. All pretty cool after the knight takes and queen e7. Okay, so now with a fresh board, let's get into the position. Queen's gambit. Nope. Albin counter, push, and we're looking at now the knights come out, and then e3, we throw in the check. Now we looked at what happens if the bishop plays here. What if the knight goes here? Well, it starts out the same, take and take. But now what? We don't trade off here. If this is not a bishop, bishops we usually trade off. If it's the knight, we don't trade off. If the knights were still on their home squares, we remember queen check, here, here, but obviously that's not a possibility now because the knight will just take our queen. So what to do? Try to remember in this position, when we're not trading here, we're not throwing in the check, we're actually developing this knight. But it can't go to f6. And in this case, we're actually going to put it on h6. That's the secret move here. Knight h6 prepping to jump into White's territory, depending on his next move. Let's say A3. Obviously, we can't jump in just yet. First, we got to retreat. Retreat all the way back to E7. And this is important because we may have some cool checks here on H4. Say Bishop E2. White's getting ready to castle. And now, since we have this square, we use this square. We're going to jump into White's territory. You see, we're attacking this pawn right here. And if black, if white is, you know, silly enough to castle, well, we've got the fork. More than likely, they will, they'll see that uh, castling is not the best option. Although 23% of the time, according to some databases, white will castle here. Most players won't play h3, but they might. And the cool thing here is, yeah, you could take here, but boom, even better. Bishop h4 check. King F1, and now, well, why don't we grab the queen? So what's white to do? If we back up a little bit after we've jumped into their territory, clearly castling's not good. H3 is terrible. You end up losing the queen after this check. So white wants to protect this pawn. It turns out the most common move is actually knight E4. We are going to look at, you know, I try always look at the most common moves. Not just the terrible moves, and not just the you know slightly bad moves, but also the common and best moves. This reveals the defender here on e3. And when this happens, we're going to first trade off queens. Bishop will take back. And back to e5. Knight takes. Knight takes. And now we're attacking here. So white very well. In fact, the most common move is to defend this pawn with b3. And you can see that's a little bit of a, a mistake right there because he's allowed us to throw this check in. Knight d3 check. King has to move, say, king d2. And black is much better. And right here, do we have to move our knight? I mean, you can try to retreat, but as you can see, you've lost a, you lost a little bit of your edge there. Instead, bishop f5. We're getting ready to castle, keeping the heat on. If black takes, we castle. We're going to get our piece back. And black, much, much better here. And look at the development. Look at the, the, the nice castled king, powerful bishops, and a rook staring down here. This is, this is awesome for black. So let's back up here a little bit. A few more lines to show, and we'll be done for this video. Okay, so after this move, knights are out. Play this. We're looking at knight blocking, takes, takes. And then the knight h6 move. Now we looked at a3, but what if 
H3 to stop the knight from coming to G4. Well, we're, immediately, we're not going to waste no time. You don't want to give us G4? We'll take F5. We'll take F5. And again, we're attacking this piece, this uh, pawn, I mean. So queen maybe comes over to B3 trying to defend. Let's go ahead and castle. Now maybe A3. And again, back all the way to B, uh, to E7. We're doing quite well right here. Um, common move right here is G4. Hey, it looks like his pawn is defended here. Knight is being attacked. And, you know, he, but he's, he's kind of pushing his pawns quite a bit. But remember, keep an eye on this weakness right here. When this pawn moves, we might have a check here on H4. And we have one. H, uh, uh, Bishop H4 check. More than likely right here, knight takes. Now, we're defending it with the knight, but better to take back with check. Queen takes back with check. And there's no way to block this. King has to move. And now the knight jumps into white's territory in a nice little position here. And uh, this game is pretty much freaking over. I mean, look at that. <laughs> we have completely, we've misplaced the king. The king is stuck in the middle. We're nice and castled. And from here, um, should be able to win this. And that's pretty much it for today's video, part one of the Alban Counter Gambit. I hope you enjoyed it. But other than that, that is going to do it, ladies and gents, for today's video on the Alban Counter Gambit. All kinds of lines after E3, whether it's before the knights come out or after the knights come out, all kinds of possibilities. Hope you all enjoyed it. Get ready for part two coming up very soon. We're going to be putting a ton of opening videos in 2024. Have a great day. Let me know what you think. Talk to you next time.